So one of the great things about being an oculoplastic surgeon is that you get to treat a wide spectrum of disease. And I like to think about oculoplastic surgery as kind of divided between functional oculoplastics and uh, cosmetic oculoplastics. So for functional oculoplastics, we'll see things like trauma. So eyelid lacerations, orbital fractures, um, you know, after trauma. Uh, we can also see aging changes to the eyelid. So malposition of the eyelid, whether the eyelids are turned in, turned out, um, droopy lids, excess skin around the lids, we can treat that. Um, we can see tearing problems, uh, so from nasal lacrimal duct obstruction or um, canalicular problems, we can help create new tear ducts for the patients to help uh, alleviate their tearing symptoms. Uh, we do a lot with cancer, uh, cancer of the eyelids, so we'll work with our uh, dermatology uh, Mohs surgeons to uh, they'll excise the tumor and then we'll reconstruct the eyelids uh, using the surrounding tissue uh, to help give a uh, you know hopefully a normal appearance again to the eyelid. Um, we also deal with uh, tumors inside the orbit as well and these are divided into uh, benign tumors uh, that may be causing the eye to bulge out or maybe pressing up against the optic nerve causing vision loss. We can help remove those. Um, we can also deal with the malignant tumors inside the orbit, uh, tumors that may have come from the skin and invaded the orbit, or tumors that might have originated from the lacrimal gland, uh, and we, we also treat those. Uh, we also treat a variety of congenital conditions, uh, you know, patients born, born without an eye, uh, we, we treat that, uh, treat those sockets. Uh, patients who have congenital tumors, whether it's in the orbit or in the eye that extends out into the orbit, we treat that. Uh, patients who are born with a droopy lid or a nasal lacrimal duct obstruction, uh, we also treat them. Uh, and then uh, going to the cosmetic side of things, uh, we'll, we'll treat uh, patients who have you know, excess skin, uh, fat that is uh, kind of protruded around the, uh, the eyelids, we can treat that and, um, and do surgery to remove that excess skin and fat. Uh, we also do things like uh, Botox or filler for wrinkles and lines around the face uh, and in the eyelids. Uh, we can also do skin resurfacing with uh, lasers, uh, chemical peels, and things of that nature. So it's a wide, uh, wide variety of patients we'll treat. We can treat babies as young as you know, a few weeks to months old, and we can treat you know patients uh, you know who are much older than that. And we also treat you know a wide variety of disease patients who come in only wanting you know cosmetic procedures, Botox, but also we have patients who come in who have you know very lethal malignant uh, you know orbital disease that requires large uh, resection and surgery. So, um, you know, it's a wide variety of issues that we treat. Well, you know, the great thing about Bascom Palmer is, uh, you know, we're ophthalmologists first. Uh, we're we do a residency in ophthalmology, we have training in ophthalmology, and then we uh, do a fellowship in oculoplastic surgery uh, and a facial uh, plastic second. Um, so, our main concern uh, with our patients is to preserve vision, and we always keep the eye. Uh, at the forefront of, uh, of our minds when we're dealing with, with patients. So uh, when you're doing cosmetic procedures around the eye, whether it's surgery around the eyelids or uh, Botox or filler to the, um, you know, the periocular region, um, in the back of our mind we always have the, the patient's vision um, in, in, in our minds. And so we think about that and um, you know, take that into account when assessing the, you know, the risk of any procedure and we're equipped to deal with you know, any of those complications that may arise. You know, thyroid eye disease is something we commonly see in our clinics, and it's uh, actually a systemic disease. It's an autoimmune disease, and you know, for whatever reason, certain patients develop uh, antibodies, uh, and their their immune system attacks their thyroid gland, um, and that can you know stimulate the thyroid gland to. Uh, increase the production of thyroid hormone, um, and that can cause eye findings um, in a lot of the patients. Um, but some of the systemic signs that you'll see um, before they may present with eye findings are something like uh, fast heart rate, you know, a tremor, sweating, unexplained weight loss, uh, kind of a, a bulging in their neck. Um, that those are things that may present, uh, you know, first with a systemic thyroid condition. Um, but for whatever reason, the, uh, the fat in the muscles in the eye uh, can actually grow. Uh, you get deposition of material into the eye, eye muscles that it can enlarge the muscles um, and cause uh, double vision. Uh, you can also get bulging of the eyes from the fat 
becoming more prominent around the eye as well as the eye muscles growing. So um, that, that's something we see very commonly. Uh, the first thing we do is actually we try to stabilize the patient's uh, thyroid status. So we work with our endocrinologists and uh, thyroid surgeons to, uh, to try to stabilize that first before we work on the eyes. Um, a common analogy we use with our patients is that you know the eyes are like your house and it's on fire because there's a gas leak going on in the basement and that's the thyroid is the gas leak. So we try to shut the gas leak off before you know, uh, uh, to help put out the fire before we start, you know, reconstructing the house. Um, so, when once we've stabilized the patient's thyroid status, uh, then we can address the patient's um, eyes. And so, you know, the most common, uh, one of the most common presenting signs for thyroid disease is bulging eyes or proptosis. Um, and so we try to address that volume disparity uh, first by uh, doing what's called the orbital decompression to sink the eyes back into the socket and make them less prominent. Um, after that, we work with our strabismus surgeons um, to address any um, strabismus um, or eye muscle uh, uh, surgery and to address the misalignment of the eyes um, if that's necessary. And then uh, finally, we'll uh, address any eyelid retraction so um, the eyelids get scarring and we would uh, put the eyelids in better position to, um, you know, finally complete the orbital rehabilitation.